Hi folks, John with the Wingman 115 channel. Thank you so much for checking in. I'm always excited to come out to the woods, but I'm really excited today because guess what? We get to talk about air guns. Yes, air guns have been the core of this channel since the beginning. I know I haven't done a lot of it uh, as of late, but hey, it's summertime. I've had a chance to get out here and I thought that we would talk about air gun calibers and we're not going to talk about what's the best caliber, but basically what may be best for you that suits your needs. Now, today, for the sake of conversation, we're going to be using uh, the Crossman platform of the 1377 and the 1322. And basically, these are multi-pump air guns. So you would pump these up, and you can pump them up anywhere from one pump up to 10. I don't recommend over-pumping these, uh, because not because it's going to hurt basically the system, but it's gonna mess up the plunger and the air chamber and all that stuff. And if you want your gun to last for a long, long time, you just don't wanna do that. So delving right into it, two calibers. We have a 177 and we have a 22 caliber. Now I'm gonna usher in some footage to show you the size difference of these two calibers. And as you notice, the 22 caliber pellet is what? Almost double the size. So for the sake of this video, we're using the Crossman Hollow Point Premiers. I buy them at Walmart, you get tens of 500 for under 10 bucks. It's a great deal. The 177 caliber is a 7.9 grain pellet and the 22 caliber is a 14.3 grain pellet. So as you can see, the 22 caliber is almost double the size. Now. Let's talk about velocity. Both of these air guns I have run through my crony and I've done videos on it and I'll leave links in the video description below of an overview and cronying both of these so you can see the shot string. With the 177, Crossman rates this at 600 feet per second. Well, we do the lie detector test and on the crony, woo, thunderstorm, so I better hurry. On the crony, it ran about 500 feet per second. The 1322 is a 22 caliber. Crossman says it's gonna do 460. Well, it came in about 450. So very good consistent shot string here. This one was about 100 feet per second slower than what's recommended. I think Crossman's using maybe the PBA alloy pellets when they're getting that to kind of brag about the uh, velocity, but uh, I don't know, that's just my humble opinion on that. Let's talk about um, use in hunting. Now, the 177, you gotta be dead on with your shot placement. Shot placement is key with the 177, especially like when I'm ground squirrel hunting or rabbit hunting. Um, Cause you just don't have that kinetic energy that you're gonna have with the 22 caliber. Remember, I'm shooting a 14.3 grain here. So when that pellet hits, it's hitting hard as opposed to the uh, 177 that has the velocity, but it's just zinging right through sometimes. So there's times where I hit squirrels and uh, they're pretty resilient, they're tough. They bunker down and they're gone. Whereas with the 22, a well-placed shot, it's lights out, usually they're right there. So for hunting small game in a pistol, with these two calibers, I would recommend a 22 caliber. Now, for air rifles, well, I mean, there's gonna be fanboys in either camp. I have the RWS uh, Hammerly 850, sweet shooting air gun, I have that in 177. I featured that uh, on the channel. I'll leave a link in the video description below. That gun is a tack driver with the 177, and I've taken ground squirrels out to 60 yards effectively with that. I've also taken ground squirrels close to 100 yards with my uh, Benjamin Discovery. That's a 22 caliber. I featured that also on the channel. But I'm croning both those guns and uh, I have a little mill dot scale and I know my holdover with that. But with air guns in the pistol range, we're only talking, you're not gonna shoot more than 15 or 20 yards. 
especially with open sights. Now, I love these two models in the same platform. This is 1377, this is the 1322. What's great about this is mods. You're only limited by your imagination and how much money's in your wallet with how you wanna mod this. There's so many different things. There's custom guys out there making custom plungers. There's metal breaches that you can put on where you can put uh, custom iron sights or you can put optics on top. You can change the barrels out. Even Crossman offers uh, custom barrels for these now. So like I said, you're only limited by your imagination. You can put a uh, carbine stock on there. So now you can shoot it like a carbine. We're chasing rain, folks. I gotta hurry. So I'm gonna usher in some footage of doing um, the croning on both of these right now so you can see the shot string. And uh, for my choice, this is just my personal opinion. I love a 22 caliber for out here. I'm squirrel hunting, I'm rabbit hunting. I love the 177. If I'm teaching uh, folks how to shoot, the wife or uh, children, when my daughter was little, she learned how to shoot with this one right here. We would go in the garage, I had a range set up with a little trap. I would only pump this up three times, so we're not getting a lot of velocity. You're only shooting about 15 feet. What's great about it, not a lot of noise, no recoil, instant gratification, fun to shoot. So if you wanna introduce folks into shooting sports, I would highly recommend either one of these models. Um, you're not gonna go wrong. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Are you a 177 fan or are you a 22 caliber fanboy when it comes to air guns? I, I want to hear. Let's start a dialogue on that. For me, all my future air gun purchases, the last, I would say, five or six have been 22 caliber. I'm starting to shy more away from the 177 just because um, I like having all my pellets the same caliber. That way I don't have to spend a lot of money buying different caliber pellets for everything. But like I said, it's not gonna break the bank buying a tin of uh, 500 at Walmart for under 10 bucks. So let's talk about that for a second. Effectiveness, um, let's talk about value. Nowadays, if you're gonna buy a brick of 22 rimfire, I mean, it can go anywhere from 60 bucks to 85 bucks for 500 rounds, and that's just crazy. Back in the day, we used to buy a pack of cigarettes, a 12 pack of beer, and uh, a brick of 22 for like 12 bucks and call it a day. I mean, th those days are gone. So, um, I mean, if, if you're on a budget and you still wanna shoot, you wanna maintain your skills, because shooting's a perishable skill. I love air guns. I can shoot a lot of times in my backyard. I can shoot up here. It doesn't uh, alert a lot of people to what's going on. We can have fun and just uh, have a great time doing what we have a passion for. So for value on the fun scale, it's just outstanding. You can't go wrong shooting air guns. Me, I'm leaning more towards the 22 caliber. I'm a 22 caliber fanboy, but let me know in the comments below. Let me know why you're a 177 fanboy and uh, we'll start a dialogue and maybe I'll do a follow-up video on this with some of the comments. Folks, if you like seeing video content like this, let me know with a thumbs up, share this video and comment down below. Let folks know this is a way that Google knows in their analytics that you like content like this. As always folks, I thank you so much for watching. This is John with the Wingman 115 channel and I'll see you on the next video. Take care, folks. Now I'm going to get out and get on some squirrels today and have some fun. Take care.